Intel's Alchemist series of graphics cards received a fairly mixed reception at launch. Honestly, when it came to DirectX 12 and newer game titles, performance was pretty solid. In ray tracing as well, we saw pretty solid performance competing against the equivalent NVIDIA GPU, for example. However, in legacy titles, for example, DirectX 9 and DirectX 11, things were not as rosy. Of course, you can never recommend a graphics card for what may happen in the future, but pleasantly, Intel's driver team have turned this around, and now, Alchemist and cards like the A750 at the price point they are selling at, at the moment are a very good alternative to cards like NVIDIA's RTX 3060. So the question is, what about Battle Mage and what are Intel's plans for the future? Well, as you probably guessed from the title of this very video, I want to touch on quite a lot of this stuff. I want to give you guys some performance and specifications updates for Battle Mage along with some feature information as well. And we're also going to touch on Raptor Lake Refresh. Yes, it's not as exciting as what's going to come next, i.e. Arrow Lake. But for folks who are interested in an i5 or an i7 CPU, for example, the Raptor Lake Refresh could be quite tantalizing. And we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's get the really obvious stuff out of the way first. Intel's Battle Mage will be the successor to its current Alchemist series of graphics cards and shall indeed be a pretty big departure in terms of architecture and performance. From my current understanding, Battle Mage will sport a number of architectural improvements, such as, of course, more XE cores, but also additional features for ray tracing and generally allow the GPU to be much more competitive with NVIDIA and AMD. I've already leaked this roadmap back in March, pointing to a release date of Battle Mage being Q2 2024. Although there is a smaller possibility, as you can see from the roadmap, that we'll see some smaller volume produced, basically for testing. But volume is targeting 2024, and as far as I understand from multiple sources, as well as various internal Intel roadmaps, both older and newer than this, Nothing has really changed at all here. For the general information I've received though, hardware bring up for Alchemist was never really the big problem, despite a number of delays to the card's launch. This was all essentially due to software related problems, both driver and BIOS. Basically speaking, the silicon was essentially sitting there waiting for production while the team toiled away to bring the software up to par. You may recall that very early reviews of Intel's Alchemist GPUs were pretty negative, especially with, let's say, DX11 and 9. Well, that obviously would have been even worse if the driver team hadn't have taken that extra time to work on things. From my understanding, though, Battle Mage, with uh, a monolithic die nevertheless, is progressing pretty well. I was told now by multiple sources that Bring Up has started a couple of weeks ago actually. Basically they're now getting chips back and essentially working on, well, the journey to get it mass production ready. So yes, I think that uh, Alchemist has been a bit of a labor of love for Intel, but they are finally on the right track. Software is much better, and obviously that is laying much of the foundation and groundwork for Battle Mage. So what about Battle Mage's performance? I've mentioned this a couple of times at the moment, but for raster and gaming, it's roughly that of the RTX 4080, putting it on par with Nvidia's current high-end RTX 40 parts. Obviously, RDNA 4 as well as RTX 50 will be on the horizon, but according to an internal NVIDIA presentation, RTX 50 is, well, some point in 2025, there's not an exact release date here, so even if you're pessimistic with your scenario, Battle Mage should at least get a six-month grace period near the top of the heap. My guess is RDNA 4 launches in a similar time period to NVIDIA's a GeForce series, but do not take that as confirmation I'm only guessing based on a few very, very, very loose murmurs that RDNA 4 may have been delayed. 
but I've not even slightly verified that, so I do not know when RDNA 4 is currently going to launch. I've also heard from another source that the actual compute performance of uh, Battle Mage may actually be higher than RTX 4080, possibly up to a 4090, but again, I would not take that with any form of credibility at this point. So, what about the specifications? Well, we have a tale of two sets of specifications. I've been given two very different sets of Intel Battle Mage specs. With the bat with the roadmap that I leaked, you can see BMJ G10 is the highest end SKU. Now Intel have officially confirmed, and by officially confirmed, it's in this leaked roadmap, that it's going to be sitting around 225 watts of power consumption. Before Raja Khadori actually departed the company, he also had a couple of loosey-goosey interviews which were pretty much hinting the same level of power consumption. Basically, the gamers don't want a part that doesn't take like, you know, 7 billion watts to run. Obviously, slightly paraphrasing, but um, from Raja's comments, you don't make those comments and then release a card that takes like 400 or 500 watts, just obviously. So I think that was Intel's way of essentially telling gamers that, yeah, we're going to be going for, you know, that type of performance and mid-range excellence. Well, let's see if it's excellence, because I think that this is a really good power target for the majority of users. I mean, obviously, we'll have to see benchmarks in reality, because reality is very different from marketing promises and certainly leaks. But... I think that this would in theory mean Battle Mage could easily find itself in everything from, well, large desktops, small form factor builds, and of course will also find its way in various mobile uh, builds as well, thanks to even being iGPUs eventually. Before we get into the actual opposing specs though, one thing I'm almost certain of at this point is Battle Mage supports a dual sub slice. In a previous video in March, I actually hinted about this with changed to SIMD instruction. I wasn't 100% certain about that because at that point only a single source had told me this and they had pretty much asked me to keep some of this stuff quiet. But um, since then, I've heard a couple of other sources that have come forward and there's also been some driver code from Intel. But basically speaking, you can see that we've got double the shaders per EU. Now, effectively, this is changing how SIMD16 is handled on the GPU. You can see this is actually present on the LPXE architecture right there. Um, but yeah, Battle Mage will basically have this running across the entire product stack. So let's go now to these performance and specifications. So the specification slide that I put out in March of this year, I was told that there were 64 XT cores, a clock target of 3 gigahertz, as you can see, support for 48 megabytes of L2, with a die size similar to NVIDIA's AD103, which is weighing in at 379. This is, of course, using TSMC's N4 process. More recently, though, a source has told me that this may be incorrect, and instead told me that the XE cores could be 56, and also the amount of L2 cache is incorrect. Unfortunately, though, I've received two figures for this, 112 and 116. Most of the other specifications, though, do seem to be the same. For example, clock frequency targets. Now, whether or not 64 XE units were cut for the shrinking of die yields, the original specifications is wrong, or this 56 number is of a lower tier skew, for example, it could be the equivalent of A750, I do not know. It's also possible that both figures are wrong. We're dealing with a GPU which essentially doesn't launch for a good period of time, like 9-12 months, and specs can change. It's also very possible that specification um, of 64 is correct, but some stuff on the GPU basically has been disabled. We saw this, for example, with the uh, GTX 480 back in the day from NVIDIA, which had 512 CUDA cores on die. Now, they didn't do this because of power consumption, basically, and frankly, I don't think this is the case with uh, Intel. I think one of the sets of specs is simply wrong. I was also told um, by a single source that Intel are prepping XESS2 for a round of the, the, the card's launch, Battle Mage's launch. Now, I will say that NVIDIA did do this with DLSS3, 
but I was told XESS will be pretty much fully compatible with the first generation of Arc. Whether there's any performance degradation, I don't know. Uh, it also seems that it will also still work on competitive GPUs from what I'm told. There also could be some type of interim XESS update which launches later this year, but I can't confirm this at this point with anyone else. So while the source has been pretty accurate before, I would encourage, of course, huge spoonfuls of salt because no matter how reliable a single source has been previously, they can still be wrong i've also been told but that uh, the ray tracing performance is much better especially in terms of the feature set it's going to more closely resemble rtx 40 as you probably know rtx 40 introduced ray tracing tech such as opacity micro mesh none of this tech though is technically speaking exclusive to nvidia it is in that they are the only hardware vendor which currently supports this but it is a dx12 standard so other competitors, of course, can certainly include this, including, of course, AMD. Oh, and there's a bit of a bonus, Celestial, which, of course, will be the follow-up to uh, Battle Mage. Intel have already confirmed their first four GPU architecture names, Alchemist, Battle Mage, Celestial, and finally Druid. I've heard that Celestial is probably going to launch early 2026, so that's not quite the two-year mark after Battle Mage debuts. Intel's plans, at least with Battle Mage, is to produce parts which will basically appeal to the mainstream gamer. I've heard from multiple sources now that Intel's plan will, of course, ultimately come down to price sensitivity, naturally. But it wants to make a profit for itself versus Alchemist, but it also knows it's still battling for mindshare. I predict Intel will be very mindful of multiple factors going forward. It's still in a very tentative position in the, in the GPU market, let's just be honest. It still hasn't even got the credibility of AMD, let alone Nvidia, but I do feel that Alchemist is doing much better. So, from what I've heard, Intel's strategy, and this is certainly not an internal quote, I'm more paraphrasing here, but it's basically to create, you know, the good times of GTX 1060 from NVIDIA. Now, ultimately, whether or not this is possible based upon a lot of things, not least of what, not least of which, excuse me, is down to pricing, we'll have to wait and see. I also do want to briefly touch on Intel's Raptor Lake refresh. There's not a huge amount of new information, which I think is going to bring a lot of excitement, unless you're looking at the mid-range. If you're the owner of a 13900K, there's a lot less for you here. But as I've said multiple times now in videos, Raptor Lake refresh is essentially a modest upgrade in clock frequency with numerous improvements in the mid-range well-known leaker enthusiastic citizen as well as other sources have confirmed the specification of the i7 14700k which is an 8 slash 12 config this is up in terms of core count from 8 slash 8 of the 13700 now we'll look at the additional specs and benchmarks from the 14700k in a moment but uh, I just want to quickly run over the Raptor Lake refresh here. You can see that there are some significant changes on across the mid-range here. Uh, I'm not going to read out all of these, but again, the 14700K is a big uh, eyebrow raiser, the 14600K as well. But obviously the 14900K, well, it's still the same core count. So from what I understand, anything over i3, so that would be i5 and above, of course, is using the 8 slash 16 die. So this basically means that Intel can mess around a lot more with A, the core counts, and B, the caches. A source had told me that DLVR is supported, but two other sources have told me that it's not true. So I'm uncertain if it is or isn't supported or whether it's just mobile only. Basically, I would say the big winners here are folks who just haven't upgraded yet. So if you want to upgrade to the 14th generation and more higher end one, then you're certainly going to be in a much better position. This is not going to change the 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 the, the layout too much though against uh, AMD and with high end cores um, such as the 7950X3D. But in mid range, it will help comparisons a lot. Well-known leaker WX Nod leaked an image which basically shows off performance benchmarks of CPU-Z and Cinebench, and Harakaze, courtesy of Beidou, have also provided additional cache configuration details for the CPU. You can basically see that there's more cache available for L2 and L3, respectively. As for the benchmark performance, well, it's roughly 4% faster in single thread and around 15-18% to faster in multi-thread. This is, of course, thanks to the additional e-cores, although I will stress, of course, this is all going to be dependent on the configuration, memory speed, and a lot of other factors. 
So guys, there you have it. Intel's Battle Mage and Raptor Lake Refresh. As I said, just to close things off, the Raptor Lake Refresh really isn't too interesting for folks who have, let's say, a 13900K right now, but if you're the owner of an older generation CPU and perhaps looking to upgrade, maybe something like a 14700K could be quite interesting to you. Personally, though, I may actually just be tempted at this stage just to wait until Arrow Lake or perhaps the next Zen CPU is to come out, but that's just my personal opinion. As for the GPUs, I think the market is going to be extremely interesting. Um, we all know that RTX 40, you know, the 4090, for example, and the 4080, you can say that they're pretty decent buys, albeit ridiculously expensive. However, price cuts have really affected AMD and NVIDIA across the board at the moment. And I'm just going to be very fascinated to see what happens in terms of the pricing strategy for Intel when they finally do release Battle Mage. Again, RTX 50, of course, will eventually launch and they will certainly outperform Battle Mage by quite a bit. But you have to say that Battle Mage, in theory, could be quite cheap. It's going to be extremely interesting to see what happens over the next several months in the GPU market, leading into the launch, of course, of Battle Mage. I feel that the GPU market has been just very strange of late and honestly has been fairly uh, volatile. Cards like, for example, the 4060 Ti have just not sold too well, and the 16 gigabyte looks like another disaster. Honestly, though, when it comes to NVIDIA, they're making money hand over fist when it comes to AI. So it's going to be a curious state of affairs, I think, going into the gaming sphere. For folks who need a graphics card right now and you need more performance, the used market is actually quite interesting as well. But as we all know, retailers are giving some pretty steep, steep discounts to cards like the 7900 XT, for example. Let me know what your plans are, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.